Can the Phoenix Suns go 73 and 9 or better? Hey guys, welcome back. This is League Talk. If you are new here, I make videos pertaining to NBA content. So I give my takes on NBA, whatever is going on in the league. And if you are into that kind of stuff, make sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and leave your thoughts down in the comments below. It's much appreciated and I'm going to get to those comments. So yeah, let me jump into this video. Now, just a few days ago, I made a video about the Golden State Warriors. Uh, I made that video asking whether this year's Golden State Warriors team is better or has the potential to be better than the team in 2016 that won 73 games and lost nine and didn't win the championship. You can go watch that video after this video. I'll leave a link in the description. But in that video, I went on and on about the Golden State Warriors, this year's Golden State Warriors. But in that video, I did also mention another team that's really good the Phoenix Suns. Like last year, the Phoenix Suns are really good. In fact, as good as the Warriors are this year, the Phoenix Suns aren't that far behind them. The Phoenix Suns, as of making of this video, are 20 and four, and as good as the Warriors are, the Suns are only half a game behind them. So I started to think, right, if I'm making a video about the Golden State Warriors who have a potential to go 73 and nine or better, and there's this other team that's literally half a game behind them, what is there that's stopping that other team from also going 73 and 9? And I wanted to make a video about that. Now, I want to make one thing clear. I'm not in any way saying that the Suns are better than the Warriors. In fact, I think if the Warriors are healthy and the Suns are fully healthy, I think the Warriors are just far better um, talent. I, honestly, like, I've been saying that for a while. But it doesn't that doesn't take away from this year's Phoenix Suns team. We are lucky enough that this year we have two teams that have the potential to absolutely make history, right? It was a huge big thing when the Warriors in 2016 won 73 games. Imagine if two teams now make it. Will this start happening more and more? Will the frequency of 73 and nine uh, teams start to pop up more and more? Um, I don't know, but this year we have two teams that have the potential to do exactly that. And, and that means that the Suns are in the same atmosphere as the Golden State Warriors. Now, the Golden State Warriors may be a tad bit up above them, but the Suns are in that same atmosphere and everybody else is kind of down here, you know, like except for the Milwaukee Bucks. They're really good too. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, back to the Suns. Can they go 73 and nine or better? Yes. Absolutely yes, you, you heard that right. I think the Suns can absolutely go 73 and nine because of a number of things. Now obviously if they go 73 and nine, they will be up there with the 2016 Golden State Warriors, um, this year's Golden State Warriors, depending on how they finish, and Michael Jordan 1996 Chicago Bulls for best team of all time. Out of all those teams, I still don't know which team I would give to uh, as to who's the best team of all time. I mean, like, I mean, Jordan did win 72 and won the championship, but we're talking about regular season. But I don't know, maybe I should make a video on that. I will. Anyways, this team has the potential to go 73 and nine for a number of reasons. The number one reason is Chris Paul. In my opinion, this team isn't nearly as good without Chris Paul. And I've been saying this for years. In fact, I made a video called Brighter Days Ahead in Phoenix. You can also go watch that video. I'll leave a link in the description below. But in that video, I just stated how Chris Paul was going to elevate the Phoenix Sun. Uh, Chris Paul has this trait where he improves teams, uh, whichever team he goes to. He did this with the Clippers, um, the Rockets, uh, okay, see, and now Phoenix. With the Rockets, he literally took them from the Rockets always lost to the Kevin Durant-led Golden State Warriors team and previous Golden State Warriors team. He took them to inches, seven games against Kevin Durant-led Warriors team. And the only reason that Rockets team even lost was because Paul George was out. He didn't even, he had no say in that. So really, Paul George has shown a track record of being able to elevate teams, being able to play on, uh, on on really good teams. And not only that, he's the reason those teams are good in the first place. He's, he's, he's either the reason or one of the major reasons that team is good in the first place. And so Chris Paul on the Phoenix Suns, especially after last year, I think he's going to elevate them even a little bit more. Although Chris Paul may not be the best player on the team, that goes to Devin Booker. 
I think Chris Paul is definitely the most important player on the team. Uh, this is akin to what Golden State had when Kevin Durant was on in Golden State. Kevin was clearly the best player on that team, but Stephen Curry was the most important player. The glue, that team went as Stephen Curry went, right? And that's why Kevin felt it'll never be his team. It'll never be his team, and he had to leave. And it's kind of the same thing here. Um, Devin Booker is definitely the best player on uh, this, the Suns. Chris Paul's, you know, he's, a, he, he's the most important. I'm gonna tell you why he's important for a number of reasons. He's the floor general. The, the Suns, intrinsically, he just has a leadership trait to him. They want to follow him not only because of his, his high basketball IQ, but just because of the, the number of years, the veteran years that he brings to that team, right? He's like an extension of Monty William on the floor. His basketball IQ probably even rivals Monty Williams, the head coach, right? Very smart player. Uh, it's the reason why he's called a floor general point guard, because he knows how to manage games he knows how to manage not only games he knows how to manage teams that means he knows how to manage his troops the guys that are following him he knows how to get them in line he knows where to get them the ball he knows where they should be it's kind of like what lebron does too someone who doesn't have this trait is russell westbrook russell westbrook has no clue how to manage a game or a team russell westbrook is a hundred miles an hour all the time 100 percent of the time chris paul knows when to slow it down chris paul knows okay i need to find this guy first Okay, I'm gonna, let's, let's set this play up for this guy. He actually has some sort of awareness of himself on floor. As opposed to Russell Westbrook, who's like a Tasmanian devil. He's just all over the place, right? And you can't always win games like that. And that's the reason why this team follows Chris Paul. And the number two reason I think the Suns can absolutely go 73 and nine is because the Suns have an identity. Thanks to the leadership of CP3, everybody knows what they're supposed to do. Everybody knows their job. And here's what I mean by that. Each player knows CP3 is the leader. He may not be the best player, but he's the guy we kind of follow. He's the guy that's gonna set the tone, right? After him is Devin Booker. Devin Booker is the best player. Best player, he is younger than CP3. He can put up the most points and hence he is the first option. Followed after him, DeAndre Ayton is the second best player on that team, right? So he's the second option, followed by guys like Mikael Bridges and so on and so forth. This, this allows for the team to have clarity. They know what they're supposed to do, they know their job, they know where they're supposed to be, and they know if the ball doesn't go to this guy, if the ball doesn't go to that guy, it's coming to me. I should get open, I should be here. And this makes it so much easier, not only for the players, right? Because everything is crystal clear and everybody's on the same page. This makes it easier for Monty Williams to draw a place, right? He, know, he knows who the play is going to go to. And if that doesn't work out, who's going to get it next? And this is crucial to why the team has such good chemistry and why the team is able to win like 18 games in a row because they have a strong sense of identity. They have a strong leader who can help execute the vision of the head coach precisely and role players, players that are willing to buy in, that are willing to buy in and understand their roles, right? This was the same thing with the 2016, again, I keep referring to the 2016 Warriors, but they are the benchmark, right? Uh, this was the same thing with that team. Steph was the best player on that team. He was also their leader. They went as he went, right? Because he was the best player, he was the first option. After him was Clay Thompson, the second best player. And then after that, you had Draymond Green, the engine that made the thing just keep going and going and going. And then you had your, your role players, Harrison Barnes, Iguodala, Sean Livingston, Festus Azili. You had all these guys fall in line and buy into the system and what the Golden State Warriors were trying to do. And what you saw was selfless basketball smart basketball, efficient basketball, and you and I see the same thing from this year's Phoenix Suns team. Everyone is buying in and it's a really, really good backbone to have. It's a trait that every solid contender or every or historic team has to have. It was the same thing with the 1996 Michael Jordan team. Jordan, best player, leader. Scottie Pippen, the second best player, and the guys followed suit with a really smart head coach. You see the same element here, and you saw it in, on the Warriors in 2016, and you're seeing it with the Phoenix Suns right here. So because of these things, I think absolutely the Phoenix Suns can go 73 and nine. But those are just my thoughts on this year's uh, 
Phoenix Suns team and their potential. I really appreciate if you watched all the way to the end here. Uh, I love the support. Um, thank you, thank you so much. And if you're interested in how good the Warriors are, make sure to click here to see if this year's Golden State Warriors are better than the 2016 Golden State Warriors. And until next time, kids.